Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is Necron's Dynasties, Warhammer 40k by the channel Templin Institute. The Necrons withered beneath the entropy of time, locked away in hidden tomb walls, scattered across the galaxy. Yeah, Mars is one of them, right? Yeah. But now this dead... Wait a is Mars one of them? Are Necrons under the Mars? I don't know. Okay, and Mars is probably not one of them, but in one of the worlds, Martians basically vent them, unleash them or something like that, yeah. But now, these dead walls are beginning to stir once more. The first step in a great awakening that will return the galaxy to its rightful rulers. Yeah, I love the whole concept of the Necrons because they are so old. Uh, Necrons basically went to the uh, old ones to help, but it's their, apparently the, it's their motto to not help anyone or something like that, I don't know. So they didn't help. So Necrons went to the Catans, and Catans were being devious. Basically made them their slaves and you know killed all the old ones. In the process, old ones created Eldar and uh, orcs basically. So uh, then you know obviously uh, you know Catan Necrons and their leader basically turned against the Catans, right? T took over control and basically cut them apart and stored them somewhere in some wards or something because you can't kill Catans. They are immortal like that. So, which gives me this idea that in the future, in the warm of 40k lore, there's a chance somebody could assemble all these Catans and Catans might come back. But yeah, so Necrons are, you know, really powerful in that sense because they have power and knowledge of the old gods like Old Ones and Catans. And, you know, somebody, uh, you know, somebody from the Mechanicus, basically some geek engineer just went there and, you know, messed with the things and unleashed Necrons or something. They were undergrounds, basically, you know. Uh, hibernating or something like that. So yeah, that's what I remember so far. So obviously, Tavlin needs to do this is a 22-minute video, so they're going to go into good enough detail, I guess. Not the details and Lutin would go. I don't know if Lutin has a video on this, but I guess we'll see in the future. But yeah, let's watch this one. Remember, well, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. So I know which videos to react to more, and you'll be supporting my channel, I guess. Check out the links I did. There's a link in the description with all of my videos. Check out the cast of playlists like Warhammer 40k reaction playlist with all of my Warhammer 40k video. So if you just want to see my Warhammer 40k reactions, check out that playlist. And there are other playlists too like, you know, John Tron, Internet Historian, History, uh, Kuzgaza, and Nutshell. Yeah, let's watch it. On many worlds across the galaxy, curious structures have been found carved of black-hued stone, the forgotten remnants of some long-dead race. This is hardly unusual, and they are noted without much excitement among countless other ruins left by countless other races. Occasionally, expeditions will be sent to learn their secrets, and hidden entrances uncovered to vast complexes located far beneath a planet's surface. Sometimes, these parties return with exotic trinkets or half-believed tales. Sometimes, they do not return at all. Few across the galaxy recognize these sites for what they truly are and the threat they represent. Fewer still might know how it came to be that one of the first races to set forth blindly into a galaxy of darkness would be damned for eternity, transformed into a tortured race of soulless constructs known as the Necrons. Neither the gods nor galaxy were kind to the Necron tier. Millions of years before humanity- Oh yeah, their, their backstory is so fucking sad, it's not even- it's seriously dark. And the result that happens through it, this really puts the perspective of how dark Warhammer 40k lore is. Because Necrons is- if you hear about their story, it's just fucking sad and depressing. Humanity evolved to sentience. In an ancient formation of stars on the outer edge of the galaxy, they raised their civilization under the torturous light of a blighted sun. Endlessly scoured by piercing solar winds and terrible radiation, the lives of the Necron tier were short and uncertain. Their bodies were consumed by agonizing cancers and constant illness. Their existence was defined by overwhelming loss and grief. Cities were built in honor of the dead and the living who wandered their streets relegated to brief caretakers of vast sepulchres and ornate tombs. 
Driven by the desperate hope that they might free themselves from the cruel maladies of their son, the Necronteer set out to carve an interstellar empire. Bereft of psychic powers, the Necronteer were unable to pierce the Immaterium, and instead relied upon slow-moving torch ships, carrying enormous stasis crypts. Though arduously slow to realize their dream, the Necronteer were able to colonize much of the galaxy. Tragically, however, they could not rid themselves of their physical frailty, for even on rich, unspoiled worlds, the curse of their homeworld left them withered and short-lived. It was a terrible irony then, that of the few other civilizations present in the galaxy, they should encounter the beings known as the Old Ones. Ancient even to the Necron tier, the Old Ones had long since conquered the burden of mortality and now were gifted with eternal life. Yet, it was a gift they refused to share, and the entire Necrontier race was left to fester in jealousy and resentment. Yeah, I think they are only called Old Ones because whoever discovered them in the current 40k timeline don't know what the name was or something, that's why they're called Old Ones. The unity that had propelled them into space was shattered, and competing Necrontier dynasties warred with one another in a conflict that threatened to destroy their entire race. Had these wars of succession been allowed to continue, the Necrontier might have been yet another footnote in galactic history, a civilization that rose, burned brightly and briefly, only to be extinguished. But the Triarch, the ruling council of three that governed the Necrontier race, realized that only an external enemy had the power to reunite the dynasties and revive the spirit of their civilization. The choice was obvious. Only the Old Ones presented a credible threat, and the jealousy and resentment of the Necronteer had been kindled into a burning rage. Successionist dynasties were offered amnesty, the Necronteer reunited under the rule of the Triarch, and armies and fleets were sent to fight a war they could not win. In contrast to the Necronteer, the Old Ones were the masters of the Immaterium, through the use of warp gates and the extra-dimensional webway, they constantly outmaneuvered the plodding forces of the Necronteer. Despite their superior technology, they were little more than an irritation to the Old Ones, and faced with an invincible enemy, the dynasties fell back into civil war among themselves. Having only accelerated the complete collapse of their rule, the Triarch again searched for salvation. Competing accounts differ on how the Necronteer first encountered the Catan. Some claim they were discovered in the heart of a dying star, while others say that the burning hatred the Necronteer held for the Old Ones acted as a type of beacon. Okay, seriously, look at look at the image somebody created. This is probably a fan art work or something like that. But seriously, the whole story is so fucking good. In Warhammer 40 I slowly realized that, you know, there were lots of people who were creating the lore and everybody had their own vision and they just combined it. Because every single plot about different races, when you see, hear them, it's like a completely different, you know, different type of thing than the other ones. And when you combine that, it makes the Warhammer 40 lore so rich. This whole concept of an old creatures like Necrons and even their story involves really old creatures like the old ones and the Catans which are godlike creatures it's just fucking awesome Co you know combining with all the you know uh, Imperium of Man Orcs uh, you know stories of Orcs and Eldars uh, stories of Tyranids uh, Chaos Chaos Gods and top of that you know fuck it I'll, st I'll add this Necron story Necrons who are really dangerous and advanced but you know they met the god-like creature which are even more older there is the lore of warhammer 40k is so rich this is ridiculous i love all this necron concept because it has that you know indiana jones feels to it right in a way that uh, you know mechanicus or whatever imperium of man basically went out there in you know basically found some ruins some mystery and they slowly uncover there are people like Necrons and then they slowly uncover that wait a minute they used to interact with something like old ones, Catans, it's just fucking awesome. You could, you could do so much with the concept of all this. Lots of games, movies, but yeah, I don't know. Regardless, the power of the Catan was incalculable. Beings of incredible raw energy, the Catan dwarfed entire worlds, 
their consciousness too vast to even comprehend. They are literally that the gods. Necrontier could even communicate with them was a miracle, and the oldest dynasties actively courted their favor. Through an eldritch type of living metal, the incorporeal forms of the Catan were gifted bodies to inhabit in the physical realm. Thus clad, their consciousness and power was focused, and they soon came to delight in the pleasures available within the material universe. One such Catan, acting as a forerunner to the coming of his brothers, appeared before the Triarch. It claimed it and its kind, like the Necrontier, had fought a war against the Old Ones, a war they had lost, and now were hidden across the galaxy, eagerly awaiting allies who might help bring that ancient race to account. Okay, first of all, didn't Old Ones die out because Necrons killed them? But Catan couldn't be killed, so you know they basically cut them into pieces and stored them, something like that. If that's the case, that doesn't that automatically make Catans more powerful than the old ones? How the fuck did Catans lost? I think that's just uh, that's just a story they made up. Maybe something limits them to you know interact in a war or something like that. So they needed some slaves like Necrons to kill the old ones, something like that. I don't know. Because even with their kind of uh, you know vast consciousness and power, maybe their limiting factor was, was literally being there physically in numbers to fight a war. So they you know ma basically made slaves out of Necrons to do that. It promised the Necron tier everything they had wanted: unity, power, and most importantly, the secret of immortality. With the pact between the Necron tier and the Catan sealed the Star Gods revealed the form that immortality would take. Enormous bio-furnaces were constructed and roared through the days and nights. What arcane procedures took place within are best forgotten. But while it was the people of the Necron tier race who entered them, it was something else entirely that emerged. In yeah. place of diseased and frail bodies came shells of living metal, and the awful truth of the pact made clear. Through their transformation, the Necron Tier race had perished, stripped not only of their flesh, but of their souls. Yet while the price had been steep, every promise made by the Catan was fulfilled. That is Clad so sad. in armor that only their most terrible injuries could destroy. Seriously, that is so sad, whole concept of Necrons, how they basically were struggling just to survive on their planet, went to the old ones to help, they didn't help. They basically went to war against the old one because of it and then found their way towards Catans who basically stripped them and killed them in a way because these are not the same people who entered that arcane furnace, right? The metal and everything, they, they, even their soul and everything is different. So they're literally not the same ones, right? This is similar to how in Mass Effect 2 there are collectors who are supposed to be Protheans but not. The DNA, all the way to molecular level, they're different. I love how I can still find similarities between this and Mass Effect, because Bioware probably took inspiration from this. The newly born Necron race and their Catan allies wrought a terrible vengeance upon the Old Ones. Even as their last strongholds were broken, and even as the webway was penetrated and invaded, the Triarch had realized the deception played upon their own people. Where they had once feasted on the energy of the stars, now the Catan feasted upon living souls. The Star Gods had gorged themselves on the Necron Tier and brought to the galaxy a war of such horror that even the victors would find no triumph. In an act of perfectly calculated betrayal, the Necrons waited until the Old Ones had been wiped out and then turned on the Catan in their moment of victory. Weakened and arrogant as the result of their long struggle, the Catan were shattered by the unimaginable energies of the living universe, focused into weapons too mighty for even the Star Gods to endure. While the Catan were a part of a fundamental fabric of reality, and therefore impossible to destroy completely, their shattered forms were bound within thousands of smaller fragments, scattered across the galaxy, so they might never reform. That is, the Catan had been I shattered. love that plot because there is a possibility somebody, you know what, one of those 
thriller movies that has some kind of an evil guy plotting something and protagonist usually doesn't know until it's very late that they were plotting something, super weapon type of things. And then they have super villain actually explains it. I can already think of a plot where somebody does that with the Catans. Before they realize it, they suddenly thinks, why did they, you know, stole all these uh, different uh, objects and brought them together? Oh, fuck me, they are assembling Catans. That would be so fucking awesome as a story. Shattered, but the time of the Necrons was over. The cost to their civilization had been immense, and powerful psychic entities unleashed during the wars against the Old Ones, threatened to scour the galaxy. Younger races, created by the Old Ones to aid in their war, Eldars. were also rising, with the wrath of the Eldari in particular, impossible for Necrons to stand against. The Silent King, first among the Triarch, and the only member of that council who survived betraying the Catan, gave one final order. His people, were commanded to sleep, to wait for a time in which even the great power of the Eldari had withered and the Necrons might return to rule the galaxy. With this order fulfilled, the Silent King vanished, fleeing into the intergalactic void, seeking solace and penance for the terrible suffering he had inflicted upon his people. <laughs> I love how Necrons like, you know, Eldars have become way too powerful. We'll wait for one day where we can return and attack them. Yeah, well, Slan has beat you to it. Slan has killed 90% of them already. But then they basically are, you know, immersed. Like, okay, we immerse in this new war. Where are the elders? Elders? No, now there's Imperium. There are humans, for fuck's sake. Basically, they come out expecting some Eldar and, you know, uh, you know, attacking some Eldar and suddenly they're just here. We, we are here fighting for the pride of the Emperor, brother. And, uh, you know, Necron's like, what the fuck is that now? Oh, wait a minute, those are space marines. <laughs> On countless worlds, the skeletal constructs of the Necrons lay dormant. They slumbered through the aeons as the galaxy healed from the wounds wrought during the war against the Old Ones, and new civilizations rose to fill the void left by their demise. But time wounded the Necrons in ways even their ancient enemies could not. Shifting tectonic plates crushed Necron strongholds on untold planets. Ooh. Stars went supernova, consuming tomb worlds in their death throes. That is so good of a detail. Primitive races fought over the scraps of Necron territories. Even tomb worlds left on. Oh, I don't want to pause too much, but that is a, such a good detail, right? Because every time you see a story where you know some old powerful creature was stored for thousands and thousands and even millions of years. Yeah, but did they predict what if a star goes supernova? I love that detail, the lots of worlds got destroyed because literally stars exploded. Touched, have felt the decay of time. Cascading failures in stasis crypts destroyed billions of dormant necrons, while others have been affected by a slow madness that threatens to override their original programming. Even the last order of the Silent King has not been precisely followed. The great awakening of the Necron race has not occurred in unison, but in fitful starts across the millennia. Errors in circuits and protocols have enacted the revivication of tomb worlds far earlier than intended, with some said to have stirred in time to see the great crusade of the Emperor of Mankind, the Cataclysm of the Horus Heresy, or the Endless Wars of the Age of the Imperium. While many have risen, most lay dormant still. The first skeletal machines encountered by the younger races were misidentified either as mindless constructs, another trivial Xenos race on par with the Hrud or Krut, or most curiously, as chaos androids constructed by an extinct subspecies of abhumans. Of all the great powers in the galaxy, only the remnants of the Eldari understand the full nature of the Necron civilization. All Necrons, regardless of their rank or station, have had their <laughs> Imagine that Necrons rising up like that and all the humans like, what is that, some kind of a construct made by some subhuman and elders in the distance slowly backing away. Like, why are the elders running away? What's happening here? Flesh replaced with Necrodermis. This living metal possesses the extraordinary ability to regenerate damage nearly instantaneously, flowing back together as if a liquid 
to repair even the largest gashes or tears. Given enough time, even the most terribly damaged Necron constructs can be repaired, or its consciousness transferred to a new body. Only a select few Necron constructs, however, possess a consciousness in the way the Imperium or the other races of the galaxy might understand it. The transformation of the Necron tier race stripped the intellect, self-awareness, and personality from all but the most strong-willed. These individuals, often the leaders or elite of Necron tier society, were given the very finest Necrodermis bodies, but even they are pale shadows of their former selves. The professional soldiery were given comparatively crude bodies, while the common citizen received whatever remained. These tortured creatures are numb to all joy and experience, as bound as solely to the will of their masters, and requiring constant direction to fulfill their purpose. Even so, a tiny spark of their mortal selves remain, just enough to torment them with memories and echoes. During the time of the Necron Tear, their civilization embraced a rigid hierarchy. While split between various dynasties, all were ultimately subject to the will of the Triarchy, a council of three pharaons, the greatest and most powerful leaders of their race. The head of this council was known as the Silent King, for he never addressed his subjects directly, but rather through the pharaons who ruled alongside him. The short lifespan of the Necron Tear ensured that members from many dynasties were represented within the Triarch, or held the position of Silent King itself. Following their biotransference, the hierarchy of the Necron Tear became absolute with the Necrons. Completely subservient to the will of the Silent King, even the Pharaons were forced to follow his directives through command protocols embedded in every Necron mind. So ashamed by his failures, however, the last Silent King severed these protocols upon his withdrawal from the galaxy, and ultimate authority had been split across the various dynasties that yeah. remained. Okay. Pharaons and other ranks of Necron overlords have awoken to find themselves free of the Silent King and able to pursue their own agendas. Combined with aberrations in their programming that leave some overlords struck by madness, the actions of the Necron race are eclectic almost to the point of randomness. Uh, that's a good addition because now, you know, Necrons are not a one entity under Silent King because if they just emerge as a one entity uh, under the Silent King and Necrons is a one entity against, you know, Imperium and things like that, that would be a bit too overpowering. But now since they're different dynasty pursuing their own goals, that's more manageable, I guess. The Necron lords of some dynasties display a splendid adherence to honorable conduct, sending forth emissaries and diplomats. On the battlefield, they adhere to the spectacle of honorable war, rigorously applying their ancient codes of battle. Other dynasties have embraced treachery and terror, utilizing psychological warfare, deception, and assassination. More still focus their attention inwards, pursuing the systematic extermination of any life forms who interfere with their affairs. While these acts are extraordinarily diverse in their extent and method, all are directed towards a single common goal, the restoration of the Necron dynasties to rule over the galaxy. Yet with the Triarch long destroyed, most tomb worlds still dormant, and others inflicted with madness, there can be no grand strategy. Each Tomb Lord pursues whatever course he deems most suited to circumstance. Some have sought to dominate nearby threats and sow terror on alien worlds. Others have stockpiled raw materials, or prioritized the recovery of cultural treasures or artifacts. A few have even begun the search for organic species whose bodies might be suitable vessels to reverse the curse of biotransference and bring about the return of the mortal Necron Tear. Damn. When committed to battle, the Necrons typically strike with little warning. A Necron Lord will have a great variety of forces at his command, but will typically rely on soldiers known simply as warriors or immortals, which made up the ancient armies of the Necron Tear. 
Lichgard, Deathmarks, and Praetorians are used more sparingly, while the largest Necron constructs are reserved for wars of annihilation and vast interstellar campaigns. Their highly advanced technology means that their armies typically need only march forward, and an overwhelming, inexorable advance has become synonymous with the Necrons. Despite this, they are capable of more nuanced tactics when necessary, and there exist a variety of Necron constructs capable of infiltration or rapid maneuver. <laughs> but the Necrons' greatest advantage in combat remains their near industry. Okay, so, uh, you know, I, uh, yesterday I reacted to the If the Emperor Attacks to Speech Device video, in that obviously, jokingly, Emperor says, why are you just, you know, sitting, ar sitting around here on your asses? Actually, do wars or something, do battles. This just makes me think like Necrons are so fucking advanced. Obviously, Imperium, whenever they get come against Imperium, it will be a bit overwhelming. But if something like Custodians, you know, in numbers are there in wars and shit, Custodians, some Grey Knights, Space Marine, groups of Space Marine, and obviously Necrons being Necrons so fucking advanced, it's literally Terminators walking around. What would be the result? I mean, you know, I guess if the, there are lots of Custodians there and Space Marine, they will be good enough to kick uh, Necrons' asses, right? Because otherwise, to me, it feels like Necrons would be way too overpowering. Because at, at like states like this, they basically defeated Catans, who are literally godlike creatures. And clearly, they are way too advanced weaponry, right? I know they are not the same as before number-wise, but as a technology-wise, they are literally the same. Right, so every time some, uh, you know, some uh, some group of people arises, those group of people attack a certain wall. That's the end of it because they have st same level of technology, even though the numbers might not be the same. Destructible necrodermis bodies. In the rare instances in which their armies have been destroyed, or the tide of battle has turned against them, every necron construct has simply disappeared from the battlefield, phase shifting to some other place or reality so that they might repair their wounds, only to re-emerge once more. Ho ho. The method by which the Necrons achieve this remains unknown. They likely retain some access to the webway, forcing their way into the ancient labyrinth through the use of eldritch portals known as Dolmen Gates. Necron starships have also been occasionally sighted, but never in great numbers. Whether the Necron fleet did not survive their long slumber intact, or they have the means to conceal their movements, likewise remains unknown. To the Imperium of Man and the other great powers of the galaxy, the Necrons remain a shrouded presence. Terrible when roused to battle and cryptic in their actions, but hardly a major presence. With the fall of Cadia and the spread of the Great Rift across the galaxy, there are precious few resources to devote to the search of the rumored tomb worlds or the mysteries of some long dead race. Oh, that is so good, yeah. Fall of Cadia basically ensures the threat of chaos is high and the war is a bit too strong, right? Around this time, Imperium cannot afford to look for, you know, tombs and things like this for the Necrons. Even though they might be a massive danger, right now they are not. And Imperium has, a, you know, more dangerous things to look forward to, I guess, than just search for these worlds. But as the time of ending begins across the galaxy, it is becoming harder and harder to ignore that tomb worlds are beginning to awaken at an ever-increasing rate. Certain patterns are starting to emerge, evidence that the power of the ancient Necron Empire is beyond even what the Eldari remember. As the great hive tendrils of the Tyranids sweep across the galaxy, it has been noted that even they avoid specific worlds. <laughs> On Mars, an entire region has been quarantined, ostensibly due to some ancient contamination, but in truth, because a fearful entity dwells beneath it. Oh, I was right then. I, I, I wasn't wrong then. Mars also has Necron's tombs. Huh. A so-called Dragon of Mars. And despite the rampant spread of the ruinous powers and other warp-spawned horrors, there are curious places in the galaxy where even the overwhelming howls of the warp have been silenced. Oh, this Places is so good. Where the silence is far worse than the screams. 
Uh, so even the warp, basically, and things like that avoids those areas. Necrons are so advanced and powerful. Tyranids, like, ah, fuck. You know, mindless Tyranids, who are apparently like animals, right? Because uh, they, they basically hunt like animals. They are not some malicious creatures like that, that who thinks and plot things. They're literally swarms of creatures. Even they're like, ah, no, I'm not touching that shit. Necrons are that powerful. But Mars? Dragon of Mars, so there are Necron tombs there, probably. How can Imperium afford not to investigate that? Because if Mars falls, Mechanicus falls. If Mechanicus falls, Imperium is fucked. Where are they going to get their equipment from? So Mars is literally the forge world for the Imperium. I mean, you can't let that slide, right? You have to at least eliminate that one. Dragon of Mars. If there are Necron tombs there, Imperium has to eliminate that first. Otherwise, Imperium is fucked. Some have even claimed that the stars themselves whisper of the Silent King. That its exile is over, and it walks among the dynasties once more. If the Great Awakening is finally at hand, then the remnants of the Eldari, the vast host of the Imperium, the Orc Hordes and Tyranid Hive Mind, even the Gods of Chaos themselves, might finally learn that for all their fearsome power, this galaxy was never truly theirs. Oh, come on. That they are merely trespassers. Oh, come on, chaos gods, come on. They're chaos gods, right? I mean, they are. They might realize, oh, wait a minute, Necrons are a massive threat, but they're not going to be scared of that. First of all, chaos, like they explained, cannot be killed, right? If a demon gets killed, basically gets reincarnated again. When, when they go back to chaos, they come back again. You can't really kill chaos in a way. Right? So Chaos Gods are not going to be like, oh, the Necrons. But they would realize that that's a bigger threat than anything else if Necrons rise like that. Whose time is finally over. What was that? Oh, wonderful. I was concerned I might have missed you. Please allow me to express my fulsome appreciation of your investigation, as you call it. Thoroughly researched and well-spoken. Delightful from beginning to end. A few errors here and there. A few omissions. I had hoped that I or my collection might warrant inclusion. But you make cuts for time. I entirely understand. I am something of a seeker into mystery myself, and I feel a sense of professional courtesy to inform you that the presence of your institute has not gone unnoticed here. Is that Imperium? <laughs> you are watched by some of whom you are already aware, and by others of which you are not. It is so rare to find those who might appreciate my work. It would be such a shame to see you become an agent of disorder. Until then, feel free to visit any time. Is that inquisition? Look, what is that? Always a place for you here. <laughs> investigates the nations, factions, and organizations. <laughs> Shut the fuck up and cut off the call. You're like, you goddamn it, you, you, you cut off my call. <laughs> I love this whole thing in the end. Alright, Necrons. Definitely really fucking advanced. So sad of origin story. Really sad. I love the whole element about the Necrons. I said that in the Brickies video. The first time I reacted like, you know, all stories are unique and literally so good that you could create like, you know, Lord of the Rings type series of movies about one particular race. And expand the whole universe with different, like, how that Marvel universe, somebody could literally spend money into creating this Warhammer universe with different movies, series of movies about one particular thing, one origin story. You can create Necrons series of movies. And it would be so fucking good because the stories are so rich that every region, every different race's stories feels completely different and different from other things and it's so rich. And they're all in one world. Thinking about that is so good. That's what makes some lore really good. Like different rich stories in one universe. That's so good. This is why Marvel Universe work in the first place. 
Like people love that, you know, everything connects together, you know, Iron Man, you know, Captain America, everything basically connects to one thing. People love that. Warhammer is that. I'm hoping that not now, maybe not next decade, maybe two, three decades, whenever in the future people realize what a great gold mine this Warhammer universe is. And somebody actually tries to make this. Well, let's be honest, Marvel Universe, DC Universe will run out eventually, right? All the main things will run out. How long they're going to make movies about that? Few decades at best. Then they'll find something else, right? I hope somebody realizes how good this is. If not movies, then at least some RPG type games. Because this is so good. I love the whole story of Necrons. How sad it is, right? How, you know, they, they found the help of old ones. Then Katan Zeppelin. Then they was literally killed in a way, right? Because they're not no longer what they used to be. Can they even go back to their original state like they want to? By finding some organic balls, organic people or whatever. To reverse the process. Can they reverse the process? Because what if these are just mindless, mindless husks, all the people who no, no longer even have the, you know, same type of consciousness anymore. They're literally mindless husks now. Only the um, peep leaders are, you know, they're conscious like that. Everything else is just basically mindless husks. What if that's the case? Necrons are so powerful, so rich story, so sad story, so depressing story. It's just perfect. Alright people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe, check out the reaction, there's a link in the description, check out the cast for different places, everything, cards, and yeah, I'll see you next time.